Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to the webinar, The Future of Antenna Technology. My name is Blessy, faculty of LearnEasy. LearnEasy is an organization that provides communication training, placement training, soft skill training, online classes and seminars to the students and professionals. In today's webinar, our presenter is Professor T. Franklin Selkirk, ME. He is an assistant professor in Rajalakshmi Institute of Technology, Chennai. With added experience in the industry as an industrial antenna designer in Chase Technology, Chennai, and an overseas education consultant in Edulogy Provide Limited, Chennai. His area of interest includes antenna design, RF system design, data analytics, and drone technology. Apart from this, he works with two consultancy projects in the field of antenna. In addition to this, he is a member of CII Young Indians and mentor for startup company. Sir, it's an honor to have you here. The time is yours. Please go ahead. Sir, you can continue. Thank, thank you, madam. Is very voice is audible? Aye, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, uh, I welcome all the participants to this uh, webinar session on the future of uh, antenna technology. Uh, I'm Frank Interfer as professor and I'm just an antenna designer uh, in the company. So, I'd like to move forward uh, to the, towards the uh, agenda which I have prepared. So, uh, so this uh, webinar session comprises of uh, the uh, basic of uh, uh, the future of antenna technology. Uh, first of all, we'll deal with this. What is an antenna? And this theory about it. And uh, we will see about consequently what are the types of antennas. And uh, apart from that, we will see some of these uh, parameters involved in these antennas. And we will forecast the, uh, the research areas uh, where the antenna technology is being, uh, being used in the upcoming generation. So you will see that and uh, next one, the antenna design. So uh, here we will see about uh, a design perspective point of view, how to design an antenna. And uh, next we will have a, a overview of an antenna simulators. So what are the softwares being available and uh, uh, how it is being uh, used, uh, just like a, a baseline as we discussed. Now. And the last time we discussing about is exploring the opportunities of it in the market. So. This will be our uh, uh, webinar uh, topic, the future of uh, antenna technologies, where you will, uh, you will learn about uh, the something about uh, what was the definition of antenna, so some insight about what is the antenna, and not into the uh, in-depth concepts. So, getting at a overall uh, view of this uh, antenna, so you can able to have a good idea about uh, either you may uh, go ahead with some. Uh, uh, this is point of view, or you can able to have a, a hobby of designing an antenna by your own. So antenna generation, so it's just like a, a previous how this antenna being derived. This is derived from the Abarca antenna. So, uh, so it's Maxwell uh, from the Maxwell's uh, uh, 1931 to 79. So fundamental equation, Maxwell's equation has been derived. So, and next comes to the third. So here are the inverse dipole concepts and aerial. Uh, they have plotted a big aerial uh, antennas in the previous uh, era where they have uh, uh, in the Arctic Ocean they have given a signaling uh, the far far end signaling they are using from the big uh, mast kind of thing they have designed for an antenna and the Marconi uh, there's a special called Marconi antenna design that is Marconi and deep frost is a signal generator has been designed and prior to is mainly focused on prior groups. And World War II, World War III, there's an intense war uh, development. So after that, uh, the antenna has been being focused, and we are in this generation where a lot of more technology is being focused. And uh, uh, let us see what are these things. So what's an antenna? So antenna is, uh, has a lot of definitions. So we say that antenna is a way of converting a, a guided wave present and the guided feed of cable or transmission line into a radiating wave traveling free space services. Just a converting device. So antenna is uh, an intermediate central part between a transmission line and a free space. So 
it converts the yes. Sir, the voice is not clear. Hello, is the my voice, voice clear now? Hello. I is said, my voice clear uh, now? Cake, uh, cake, but it is not clear. Hello, hello, hello. Is it clear now? Uh, cake is okay, but it is not clear. Uh, uh, continue the page, no clear either. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, you can able to hear. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what is an antenna? So, the antenna is a way of converting the uh, guided wave present in a waveguide, a filter cable or transmission line into a radiating waves traveling in free space or vice versa. So, this it is easily can you can able to say that it is a guiding kind of uh, uh, it is intermediate part where it uh, it gets the wave from, from a kind of input and it gives it the output. So, it acts as an intermediate between. Uh, input generator as well as the output uh, uh, free space. So it's a passive device which is a transition between a trans uh, transmission line and uh, and the air. So it's also it's also convert it's also have a another definition convert conversion of electronics electrons to photons of EM energy. So and vice versa. So it's also called as a transducer uh, which converts an electrical energy to an electromagnetic energy. So these are the whole uh, antenna definitions which is being given. So I like to uh, say something about this uh, process of uh, how this antenna works really. So this is taken from a Balanese book. So there, there is a transmitter antenna, there is a receiver antenna. So here you have a generator which generates a, a signal. And there is a, a transmission line which carries the signal, and there is a third one. You have a contact of projection. So it's a kind of a, a disk and we call it as a disk and So this is a basic uh, phenomenon of an uh, uh, an antenna. How it radiates in a free space. So here there is an alternating current. There is this alternating current being fed to a two-way transmission line. So this two-way transmission line carries the energy. And when it comes at the uh, inside of this uh, uh, flared, flared end, we call this flared end. So there, what happens? There is an oscillation. So it it, it is a concept uh, called the oscillating dipole. We have a concept of oscillating dipole where the positive and negative tries to oscillate north and south pole, and tends to oscillate. It, it is a recursive process. So once it reaches at the edge point. So if there, there is a disconnect, so the next medium is the air. So these wave fronts, we call as wave fronts, when it comes to the air, it, it tries to form a kind of a wobbling kind of. When you put a, a stone in a water, still water, so there comes the kind of waves. So similarly, that concept is used here. So there are some spherical waves. They Incurred in the free space. So it oscillates, goes on oscillating the free space in the heat process, uh, is performed by electrical and magnetic field perpendicular to each other. And at the far end, the, uh, the wave from spherical wave from will transverse to a planar wave front. So at the same time, when the uh, decide of receiver and these planar wave from being received and for back at the receiver. So uh, we call this as a, a generator. This transmission line is called as a TM wave, one dimensional wave, guided uh, wave, one dimensional wave. The last, you can able to, the third part is taken as transition region or antenna. So this is the part we are going to focus on. And the fourth one is the free space wave radiating in three dimensional. So uh, the three dimensional, we, we name it as vertical code uh, theta phi. Okay, these are two theta phi and uh, r. So the first two parameters will be taking more uh, concisely. So uh, the elevation angle and the azimuth angle. We will see what is that. So we have seen what is this uh, uh, what is an antenna, where we fit, fit, fit that antenna, a basic kind of thing, how it radiates in a free space. Next one, a mechanism of radiation. So how how this antenna radiates? So what's happening? 
So this is the concept I have given here. Uh, where either a wire is having some curve or a second one you can take it as bend wire if the wire is bended out or some discontinuity uh, or some uh, discontinuity you can able to uh, I'm seeing this thing right discontinuity and fourth one is the, is the antenna is grounded. So either of these four things uh, these are the these are the main thing you have to know while designing an antenna. The discontinuity. So how this happens? So for an AC current, ideally there is a single frequency of radiation. The moving charge through the curved or bend experiences centric speed and acceleration. So these uh, these charge when flows through this wire, it will be in a dormant state. So it tends to it tends to for this normal charge, you try to uh, accelerate it. Okay? So it will be on a DC motion. So it is the purpose of the wire as uh, we have to make some bend or curve or you have put some discontinuity in between such a way that this charge get accelerated. So this will produce a radiation. So that's the concept how it radiates. So for discontinuous wire impedance uh, change rapidly at the point of discontinuity as I, as I say that you can see the discontinuity wire here. So there is an impedance transformation going on happening. So I think that you, on the previous one, left hand side, you have some uh, x, x impedance, and on the right hand side, the impedance converted to some y value. So this is also a response of radiation. So I, I told you about the two, two ways of radiation, right? Either you should make uh, an antenna to a discant, you have to curve it, or you have to make a bending there or you have to make some discontinuity in your antenna design or you have to put one is you have an antenna of length L okay at the last you have some load and it is being grounded so neither of these four forms you can able to do to uh, have a radiation basically. until otherwise uh, we won't have any kind of radiation so we can stay in our uh, house like uh, the uh, the electrical wires is being concealed out concealed inside the building it's all radiating, but it is at a very limited bend. So you can see the bends. Wherever you have bends, there will be have some more radiation. There. So uh, it, but that, that doesn't tend to give a useful uh, application or anything because it has been bonded by a, a rubber material, so insulator. So it doesn't act as a good radiator. So the for mechanism of radiation, this is the core concept. One basic radiation equation. So, what is equation governing? So, you can see here you have a, a, a length of wire which is uh, L and some infinite will some a differential level ticket as I. So, equation is given as L into di by dB is equal to L rho A. So, it's, it's a, it's a uh, of acceleration and the charge value. So here the equation is a big charge. Uh, it's also a fundamental equation of electromagnetic radiation. So uh, for a for a basic uh, theory of an you try to we are we are dealing with the length of an antenna. So the radiation somewhat uh, depends on the length. So we take a differential length di by dv this is small length that's equivalent to the length of charge and acceleration. So this governs the uh, basic radiation equation when you put some discontinuity or any of the four. Uh, role of antennas. So what this antenna is mainly doing? The first one is spatial filter. So it's concept of directionally different sensitivity. Uh, it is it is a di so directional and this is spatial uh, 3D. So it also has a filter. Next one is the polarization filter. So due to some, we have some linear elliptical uh, kind of polarizations. So this three uh, polarization is dependent on some sensitive value. So here also the antenna can be serve as a primary applicant as a filter. And third one is the uh, impedance transformations. Uh, that we need to have in an IC system design. Uh, we, we tend to change the uh, 
uh, impedance uh, according to the requirement of the uh, actual passive components. So, uh, so impedance has to be changed when, uh, when designing in an uh, RF system design or any kind of IC when put there. So, there is a transition between uh, so free space and transmission line. So, as I already said on the previous uh, uh, presentation, there is a transmission line, there is a guided medium, that is a transmission line. So, and there is a free space. So, in between, there is an impedance transformation. So, transmission line should be designed according to like uh, 50 ohms. Or, or if your antenna is designed according to like 50 ohms, the impedance is matched. So, there is a theorem called maximum power transfer theorem. Uh, so, th this theorem gets satisfied. So, is it is good? Is it so? But as impedance, when the impedance was equal, so the maximum power is delivered to the load. Uh, if, if the maximum power is not delivered to the load, what happens is like there is a wave called standing wave, uh, which will reflect back from the antenna to the transmission line. So, this will ultimately change your impedance and uh, it will make the device to heat it up so ultimately damage the component so our ultimate aim is to for an antenna designer the impedance matching uh, is more important as well as we should know where to transform our impedance sometimes our our antenna may be designed like 50 ohms so impedance so my coaxial may be like different my wire may be like transmission line may be like different 75 ohms so in between, you have to use some balance store or some impedance transformer devices to transfer the sound if you want to 50 ohm. Fourth one, propagation mode adapter. So from free space to guided wave. So uh, this is a uh, this is act as a receiver side. So from free space fields that E and S fields to guided waves. So here you have some uh, T P M T M modes of uh, waves. So this this can be a cavity because it's a cavity model. Uh, the antenna can also act as a related cavity model also. Example transmission line and waveguides. So here we are going to see uh, what are the types of antennas we have. So these are the overall uh, basic structure the antenna we like to see. Uh, in fire, we have some Piaggi wood antenna. This is a kind of uh, the TV dish. Over there, we have uh, uh, Yagi wood uh, TV uh, antennas on the top. Uh, we try to screw, screw it down whenever there is signal uh, loss. We try to bend it out and find a pitch uh, line of sight with the respect to the satellite is perfect. So, it's a whole technology is Yagi wood, and uh, we have this top periodic antennas and conical spiral antennas. Uh, there is an antenna called loop antennas, dipoles. So, array is a concept in dipole. You have a arrays. Arrays means like copy and paste the antennas in a horizontal vertical fashion in the same way. So, you see that uh, one by one. Folder dipoles. Uh, it's in place WS, WSGK is the waveguide uh, snake pattern uh, antenna. The twin lines are these V kind of biconical antenna. A rhombic antenna, long wires. So, as you can see, a lot of antennas here. These antennas base from different frequency ranges, starting from megahertz to a terahertz. To it's up to you have to decide which antenna we have to take. Mostly, uh, recent technology we stick on with patch antennas. You can see a patch, microstrip patch antennas, slot antennas, array antenna. So, this is more dominantly in use and uh, FSS this is this is mainly uh, used in a meta material uh, antenna which has been a new antenna which can be to see nowadays so FSS antennas is very much predominant now uh, spectric resonator we call it as uh, antennas and uh, it's horn antennas you can able to uh, conical horn you can able to see in our base station uh, which is outside uh, we can able to see that on the top of the tower that's a conical horn, you can be able to see. So it varies according to these sizes. So according to a big size to, uh, to a very much nano size. 
So it all depends on frequency of operation that is left. And it depends on lambda is equal to C by F. Wavelength is equal to uh, C uh, the power at meter per second divided by the frequency, which is your operating frequency of antenna. So you have to decide uh, which frequency you are going to design your antenna. Then we can, then only we can able to allocate what kind of pattern of antennas we can able to plug it out and what uh, what kind of uh, technology we can able to infer inside and get the uh, resonated frequency what it have been designed. And this is a sample uh, a photo given uh, you can see here uh, base station antenna. Uh, this is a, a base antenna, reflector antenna. Uh, this is the kind of uh, antenna array antenna. Uh, this this antenna which I have shown here is the Neander type antenna, which is based on PCB. So most of PCB you can able to see a chip antenna as well as uh, a Raspberry Pi, Arduino, anything, any kind of uh, uh, model you can able to see. You have antenna there, the receptor antenna, a transceiver antenna. So mostly you can able to see a chip antenna or this Neander type antenna. And you can able to see on the uh, rightmost side, uh, satellites we use a big uh, uh, mask of uh, uh, array antennas, which is configurable also uh, for space application. And last, you can see the blade antenna. The blade antenna. This blade antenna mainly been used in cars, as well as in a uh, fighter jets, uh, in an airplane. Today. We use this blade antenna. Okay, this is kind of a thing. Uh, Full duplex trans. I hope this transmission offers. So I don't want to go inside of it, but give you an insight, uh, give some uh, small points about what is this transmission signal being going on. So when the signal being received on the antenna, this is your antenna. At what frequency you have to decide it. It's a combiner. The, this this signal bit combined here. So there is a phase shifter. So for, for uh, there is a low noise amplifier. It's a down converter. The digital cancellation baseband and it's been uh, forwarded to the up converter or repair as well as giving to the combiner port and it also sends the signal. So an antenna can act as a transceiver also, simultaneous reception and transmission. So uh, the, the the received wave uh, or the transmitted wave maybe get the phase shifter because you know, uh, many times you get uh, from the if a wave get the imprint on the wave droplets uh, that is a rain droplet the phase get altered. Uh, so uh, as well as the um, from the satellite to the uh, base station so base station now crossing the sinusphere there is a molecule so air molecules so crossing the air molecules uh, the sinus molecules. So crossing the ionized molecule, there is a there is a phase shift. So ultimately, what happens? The antenna receives all the signal, and it, there is a separate. We have to add a phase shifter. From there, you have to go to the low noise amplifier, and there you can have some multiplexer to divide the signal channeling, and you can able to uh, channel wise, you can able to take it out and give it to the specific application. So antenna equal and circuit model. So how do Convert to an antenna to a circuit. So here, uh, in the transmitter side, you have this is a cable. So it's a guided anything guiding guiding medium. That's a generator. And uh, what this cable is doing is it's having an inset S. Okay, that's an impedance in the cable. It's considered R plus J X reactance. So. If the cable, so if you go and buy some cables in our shop, no? so it's already if you buy Quasi cables, Newton has 50 ohms. You can say that you can see in that uh, uh, wire that it's printed out 50 ohms. And why is it 50 ohms? So in foreign countries, they use uh, 72 ohms. And in, uh, in our country, we use 50 ohms. But the reason is like now they uh, the operating is quite different from our country compared to the uh, other foreign countries. That's the reason why you, why you uh, we have to carry a converter uh, that to uh, convert the uh, computer. So mostly our devices which is manufactured here as 50 ohms cannot be worked on the foreign countries. So there you have to uh, put some impedance transformation so called as a converter which is available. In. So here inside it should be around like you no know, 50 ohms. So this antenna your designing impedance should be around 50 ohms. In 50 and 50 get matched. 
your maximum power is delivered to the load low digit and when maximum power is delivered so it the the, the radiation will be more okay so what is what's inside this antenna radiation resistance radiation loss and some in a uh, imaginary value jacket's value so all together it frames or gives you some z value like impedance value i am sure that your antenna will not be will not give 50 volts so the uh, real the simulated we can give 50 but in a real fabricated uh, and uh, putting in the real world you cannot get 50 it around it will be around like 46 or 47 around to nearer to 50 but we cannot achieve exact 50 value is very difficult because due to some loss of losses resistance loss you have a lot of resistance uh, so he, this because of these losses and the age aging factors there also and the quality also matters a lot so it's all affects the performance so but here anyway, we we get the signal so this is a, a antenna equivalent circuit and uh, radiation resistance and some antenna efficiency can be derived here by using this compass some i like to give some shapes of uh, a patch and i need to go further look what, a, what is this patch what kind of shapes can we have these are the shapes which i given here this is already being simulated find out that's a result is there so these are existing you can use this shape to uh, design your frequency which you have uh, uh, derived it in your uh, uh, application so these are the shapes we can able to use you see here these shapes also have a discontinuity you see this triangle there are three discontinuous regions right one two three i'm sure that we will get some three different response for this uh, antenna triangle antenna three different frequency response we will get and if you take the rectangular maybe like these two edges can be taken as radiated range and you get some two different results. Maybe the uh, discontinuity, uh, there is the radiation. Okay. So make sure you have some discontinuity in your design. These are some of the of the existing design, which is taken from Balani's book. And uh, different circuit. So uh, something like uh, if you are designing an antenna and uh, how this antenna is implemented to a circuit model nothing but our lc so this is an a resonator a tank tank circuit which are the lc tank circuit so a put an lc in a, a parallel manner so if you see at different frequency ranges so when you put some uh, gap here there's a port right there's a gap here you can see here in the second time so there comes the gap. So there you have an inductance effect, mutual inductance effect you have. So likewise, lot of antennas you are going to design, you can able to realize into a equivalent circuit model. Why we go for this equivalent circuit model? When we go to equivalent circuit model, we can decide frequency level. Some antenna parameters I like to uh, say while designing an antenna. So these are the main parameters i don't want to go into as a sort of time like i want to go into the technology so gain directivity effective approach radiation resistance bandwidth being good if time permits i like to uh, go on with uh, this as i think that so solid angle radiation pattern for field so directivity and radiation impedance effective approach so for analyzing an antenna, you have to know these all parameters because by this parameter, you are going to evaluate your antenna whether it's a good antenna or a bad antenna, can we use or can we not use. Okay, uh, the kind of I like to go on with the uh, parameters, but I like to shift to this antenna uh, for the future of antenna main technologies. What is going on now? So industry 4.0, uh, you know that what are the 4.0 screen, uh, just, uh, what are the upcoming technologies being uh, uh, just plotted out here. So in this in this technology, as I given, there's security, cloud computing, mobile machine learning, deep printing, advanced robotics, 
or a pedicognitive edema. So uh, in majority cases, there is an antenna. So antenna plays a very vital role in uh, every technology, uh, every industry, every research oriented. Uh, in, even in medical also we have, have an antenna. So antenna is within us. So we are we, everywhere we go, the antenna follows that we have in our mobile phone. So, so I like to go for this next slide. 5G market up. So how does antenna beam more, more uh, upcoming in the upcoming generation? How it is more important? So in 5G uh, generation, uh, millimeter wave technology for this. So in mobile technology, uh, we're going to have a, a macro kind of broadcast networks or a, a, a macro cells we can have. Uh, these, these deployments are being being done now such a way that we're going to have a, a, a pickup base station kilometers or more uh, apartments near the top of every floor. Maybe they're designing in a such a way that they are focusing on the data rate, it, the streaming get higher, and the, uh, and the focusing and the, we, we say that the beam forming to the uh, so this is the uh, this is the future of this antenna is going on rapidly now so in different scenario is being going on so in, in terms of uh, cars the smart cars in terms of industrial application in terms of indoor or outdoor antenna buildings so you can see here like small cell antennas in buildings you have beamforming antennas. These buildings are going to engulf with this kind of 5G antenna uh, popped out on the top of the base station. Uh, next generation we are going to have a near contact with this 5G towers. So small building I would be broadcasting convenience and automobile adaptation to 5G. So these are some of the technologies being governed and the this diagram, like uh, with respect to spectrum and bandwidth and the uh, cell allocation, so that it has a uh, honeycomb structure that we try to have, uh, such a way that every honeycomb will have a separate uh, uh, base station, and uh, they are going to redefine this uh, uh, base station's allocation okay, to a different level at the 5G. So they they try to have a full depth communication with the uh, massive remote technology and uh, it can be able to have a uh, uh, 250 to 300 2 a.m. Uh, full duplex uh, signal and uh, they're converging uh, that is they're converging to a uh, uh, 64 2 a.m. to 256 that's why that the data get higher the bandwidth is getting higher so uh, the radiation level also be getting higher. Next technology. So we we saw about that one is this spectrum band we're going to allocate versus massive you know, what are the uh, technology being governed at 5G. Now uh, this future of uh, smart cars being going to be launched how did we Launched by Tesla, Cars and uh, Volvo. These are some of these uh, antennas being uh, engulfed inside this bus. You see that in class you have the GNSS LPE antenna, 75 gigahertz lens array data antenna. See this. Uh, array. So we have seen there uh, types of antennas, radar antenna. See the frequency 77 kilohertz. Here we have wide steerable fan beam antenna. This fan beam represents the radiation pattern. So this pattern will be like a shape of a fan. So this particular antenna will give you the fan beam antenna Wi-Fi. 
axial flow profile, uh, Wi-Fi and uh, antenna, GNSS, and there we have blade antenna. This blade is being converted to some dual field combination. They have defined, redefined this blade antenna to a different uh, structure, and uh, there is a, a total shift like adaptive smart antenna system according to the required direction. So this this antenna is at 5.9 gigahertz. This is, this is the latent frequency. And there is a fan beam antenna 27 to 20 gigahertz at KA band. So okay. every antenna you can see in this car has some frequency. This radiation pattern. Ah, yes, sir, you're connected. Yes, it, is it a uh, viewable, madam? Is the presentation ah, yes, viewable? Uh, no, no, it is not. Uh, just a second. Uh, just a second. Is it viewable, madam? Yes. Ah, yes, sir. It's agreeable. The IPPD is here. Ah, yes, sir. It's so it's when the frequency get... Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Miss. Uh, when the frequency get increased... So here you have to put a point there. Uh, when the frequency is increased, the, the antenna site gets reduced. So it, when the, if it is going to gigahertz to terahertz or above that, your antenna size will be in the form of millimeter or nanometer size. So here the complexity of the design gets more important. When you are designing at 2 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, it is not a problem. When you go again with the higher frequency, so there comes it comes like coupling problem, a lot of losses will be there. So there you have to put a concept of array to get the more highest beam out of it. So here, mostly at the higher frequency, the concept of array will be implemented. So here uh, you can see some sample antennas you can see horizontal vertical action, you know, four cross four or twenty cross twenty or sixty cross sixty. It's your uh, point. How much antenna you have to test your? So here uh, at the mobile phone, you all have mobile phone. So there you are going to uh, at the coming generation, we are going to have a 5G mobile phone. So 5G antennas are being designed. Launched. So here uh, the 5G array is here. It's a uh, array. The 5G is a is an array millimeter antenna. So here at the bottom side, at the edge side, at the frame also you have 4G or 3G as less well Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, every antenna will be there. So, this is one technology. You can able to design an antenna for mobile phones. Right. When we go for this industrial communication infrastructure, so here uh, RFID tags are being used. So, in RFID tag, uh, the, the the enter type of design antenna is mainly used for RFID. Different different designs are being used, but RFID, uh, the enter uh, design kind of 
antenna is being used for RF radio reader for mainly purposing for uh, ultra high frequency tracking. So if you want to design an antenna for a industry to go for RF radio technology. So this is one feature scope is there where antenna is mainly focused in industries. And this RF radio reader you can take it as a uh, simple thing, a computer is there, RF radio reader, antenna is there and you have a tag. Uh, nowadays, uh, Zamezons, uh, 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 what is like all kind of uh, uh, online shopping, they have a product. So, so there, there we have an inventory setup. So all the materials will be there. So there come, they try to put a tag on every material and they try to uh, track those uh, track those materials using this RF ready. So this arrows or some inventory uh, kind of things stock house, okay. And this one, uh, so they try to design uh, a body on antenna. This one new technology uh, being covered. This is being designed for uh, a military purpose. So military uh, person will try to have a uh, jacket within themselves, the protective jacket. So there, there uh, they try to uh, previously they try to carry a big uh, receptor antenna in the backside. This is a heavy payload for them. And the technology being transferred now, they are going to use a uh, antenna which is being printed on their shirt or in the jacket, such that they can be able to track their uh, for their their soldiers, if they are a team, they can able to have a network among a body or a network among themselves within a cloud, within a cluster of region, and they can able to have an access. So you can see in the camera they have a, a variable antenna. On the shirt you have an antenna being a, a body variable antenna. Okay, transmit and receive high level at a battery to information. On on the hand he is having some a GPS system. Okay. So everything is automated. So antenna plays a major division on this uh, body war antenna, uh, this variable antenna for the military wars. This one new technology can also design it. And in drones, you have uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, under drone vehicle, drones. Like, so there they are using an antenna called mushroom antenna uh, for a uh, uh, I think it's a Wi-Fi, uh, so to track the drone. So uh, for the drone, we have a mushroom antenna. It's also been uh, available in Amazon. So you can, uh, for this kind of antenna, I haven't seen any kind of uh, a smart antenna system in the drone. At present, they use a type of kind of thing as mushroom, uh, but mushroom kind of shape to be at the top of the drone. So research is going on. Uh, how can we have a smart antenna system, a smart uh, uh, signaling? Uh, the base stations uh, without signal loss to the drone. Mostly the drone is subjected to uh, uh, like no signal loss, so the, it can go up to a certain limit. Uh, and uh, moreover, it, it, it also has a constraint of the power supply. Uh, maybe like one hour for us a battery to get a finished scan. Uh, so one hour at all can able to drive the drone. Uh, so you cannot take the drive the drone as a one day on full. So the there's a constraint one on power supply, there's a constraint on signaling also. So there is a, a, a research going on specifically on this drone technology where you can have a smart antenna system. And Google Lens and the uh, Tasha implants. So uh, here uh, this is a quite a different technology uh, as some of you might have known. Google Lens, the Google has uh, discovered, uh, Google Lens, the Google Lens, there you can see some antenna there. So, uh, as you can see here, the energy storage module, heavy communication power reception antenna. So, this design, the split ring, we call it as a split ring, this design. So, this acts as an antenna. So, it is, it is, uh, it is plugged into the eyes for the diabetic patients to find out their uh, glucose level. So, this is an advanced system. And they have uh, done a major research on antenna about like putting into the frame of the glass. 
so this is one upcoming technology biochip this is this is not a fashion now as we are in a covid situation and the bicho also the said that this to be in a contact tracing is more difficult now so i think that bill gates has said like id 2020 uh, that is nothing but a biochip in that biochip you have an antenna so maybe like uh, a generation away from now we try like to maybe possible like uh, will be having will be having urine they having an antenna in their body so this biochip will be implanted for tracing uh, us so it is already it also be done by the microsoft, microsoft as you already said in in some of the months like id 2020 is will come so it will be in the shape of a brain chip you can see here the actual biochip size so there is a and about antenna coil so uh, the major uh, the research is going on with this uh, biochip Uh, to further more ensure the compliance EMI EMC compliance because it is getting into the uh, it is going to have an interaction with the cell. So whenever you are going to design an antenna inside your body is going to be a bit complex. So because we are inside the radiation, we are surrounded by the uh, 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 globe of radiation. So we cannot accept. For so once again, if you put uh, one more. Uh, five, uh, uh, radiation in our body, we should be very careful in dealing with it. So that's the thing that uh, the point is like radiation. The, they, they are they are focusing on this radiation. What happens when uh, uh, when uh, when it is when the antenna is this RFID is exposed to near to a base station? What will happen uh, when you when you are using your cell phone nearer to this biochip? What will happen when when radiation is more higher? What will happen? If, We are going to have a uh, more number of heat uplet, so the tissue get uplated and it will uh, burst. So there may be a chance like the compliance, EMI, EMC compliance, as well as a lot of society, uh, you know, the FCC standards. All these standards are being there. Like, uh, is it safe to use on human beings? So normally in many foreign countries they are started using this. So they never use in a uh, what you say like. A, Uh, so, uh, debit card or uh, any cash cashless society is going to come. You know that uh, the world of cashless society. So the IBM has given a, a good ad about that one is person be buying in a shop and if you take in a inside put in a jacket and they are going outside the bill will become. So it's purely based on like this antenna being going there. So the transmission is so fast. So they have done it, but the purpose and do this. is like the radiation level that's what i'm stressing out is it, it will be a good or bad that i really doesn't know but it will be uh, as far as uh, times goes on with lot of trials and uh, like 10 to 20 years of lot of trials they may come to a conclusion until that it will be very difficult to get this biochip metametal and uh, this technology is more uh, approaching now like Uh, this uh, this concept is equivalent to like uh, Harry Potter, you know, the Harry Potter cloak and it is going to invisible world. Same thing they discovered it. Uh, a Chinese uh, person, uh, I think his name is like uh, T. A. Uh, uh, Shin. Okay, I think he has discovered this meta material and now, and this is nothing but the it gives a negative refractive index. It is a, a splitting resonator concept. You can see here, meta material drops and dies. So uh, by using this, they are going to ha- uh, have uh, negative uh, reflections. Okay, they are going to backscatter the reflection, and they are going to project it. Okay, on uh, the what is on the back side. So this is done, and uh, most often the uh, the technology is being uh, focused on this particular concept called meta material. So any research you can do, you can do in this field is going to boom now. Uh, where this uh, series, uh, you know the CD links you have, the CD player you have, there you have a small lens, right? So reader lens. So that lens is going to be uh, converted to meta material where the transmission and reception rate will be like much more higher. So this is one upcoming technology. And next one is healthcare and uh, telemetry. Uh, this is like you no. Know, uh, Uh, this is this is uh, going to be a far that that not that's not going to be a far end. This all this happened, and uh, you can see a lot of fan uh, just sensors sensors are there, and it's being covered to an antenna. 
and you can now see here the telemetry device how it works for the patient. Uh, you have a ceiling antenna, there's a mobile, there's an antenna, and the bedside there's a monitoring device. So how do you give a smart uh, antenna towards this healthcare and telemetry? I think this haven't uh, we have we haven't seen it in our society, but it's on it's on process and can able to see on the uh, developed nations. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, antennas were uh, fully engulfed in your body and uh, gives you full real time data. Spray on antenna. I think this is quite different topic. Uh, that is uh, one of them I've invented and uh, spray. And it's, it's made of, uh, I think it's, uh, it's made of titanium carbon powder. Uh, and you mix it this titanium carbon powder with the water. That's it. It, 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 it tends to conduct it. Conduct it. So it is a good connecting characteristics. So they also try to have a nano based uh, materials combining them, such as in graphene, uh, nano silver, carbon nanotubes. So they try to make sure that it is a thick, uh, uh, thick uh, kind of uh, material, spraying material. When you spray in the uh, in a material, you can see as a material like this right here. So it is being coated here, and that's an antenna. So this technology is very new now, and this Yen 77 this spray is available. This conducting conducting uh, spray is available in net. It's cost around like 1,800 to 2,000. So there you can see an antenna called it. That's a mask there. That's a mask there uh, taken uh, by the HD and uh, they spread it. Okay. So this is uh, antenna is called as fractal antenna. Okay still sustained similarity based antenna so they have tested it and it's quite receiving so you can see some in your youtube also so they have tested it for wi-fi and it's been receiving so this is a big uh, invention this, this is like you don't have to design uh, take much more time you have a design mask it just uh, uh, spray it here the antenna is ready EM simulation. Uh, I like to go fast about like. See, previously we are conversion method of designing in our pen and paper, but now it is transfers to the system that can be used. Uh, these ADS they go CST. So you can see a lot of one of four. Uh, I think the eight simulators is there. I work on areas such as CST. Take what, what an antenna makes, from so I work. So apart from this, uh, uh, I, for beginner kind of thing, I think you stick on with the antenna makes. It's a free, uh, uh, it's a trial which has been available. So it gives an inbuilt model antennas readily available. So you just click those antennas, see the results, and go for that. That's it. So that's it for a startup is very good. These are uh, yeah, CST and ADS such are quite used in DRDO, ISRO, uh, some research for internet, a baby organization. They use this software. But I doesn't have a, uh, I don't say the other software is not being used, but the the visibility of being the attractiveness and the uh, the simulation power of simulation is more higher for the CST, computer simulation technology. So these are the softwares you can able to use for the antenna design. So why what is this uh, FTDT, MOM, and FEM? You see, uh, by simulating uh, your antenna has to be sliced down into some mesh console, like as mesh. Uh, each small, small, small uh, kind of chip uh, that meshing, if you put like a rows and columns, it will be like a like, small uh, chip like you nothing. Know. Your antenna will be like converted, converted into cell. Small, small, small chip. So each chip will be uh, governing, or it will uh, inflow, it will form a maximum situation, and it will submit it. When you simulate okay, in a three dimension space in a software, this maximum situation will be going on inside each term. Such a way that there's a function called Green's functions, is being satisfied. So the familiar to the, uh, the, the integration of all the things give you the result. Current distribution, relation pattern, gain, I think. 
so what methods what kind of andas you going to get what method of simulation you are doing there are three methods mom fpm fpt so here uh, this software no this is more important slide i can uh, put a snapshot in it it's just some http about echo to have and uh, i think uh, and why why i give you this tips here finite element method okay when you go like from complex uh, start from a uh, very small size to the you have to depend what solver that is fpm mom or ftp you are going to apply so fpm truly goes on with patientness on kind of patientness yeah a man is there you can see the man is there there you have one antenna there right how this antenna affects this man brain or tissue so we call as fcr specific absorption rate you can do this you can do this in fpm Next one is FPDT. FPDT also can be able to do. And MOM, method of performance. Method of performance we can able to use the antenna design also, as well as array design. You can see the array, right? When you put an array, you can able to go for MOM methods. Okay. So the energy to size is increasing. The length of the antenna is increasing. Okay. But and yeah, ML, yeah, yeah, ma'am. That is my. Level fast multiple method. So, if you put a space station, the space craft or a satellite, a big structure can see the airplane, like a ship, okay, a real parabolic station, they can see. Okay, but last year, the electrical size increases to like a reason based on a on the big uh, warship i think you can able to go with the propagation modeling okay pm or is uh, it you can able to constrain to utd okay so these are things uh, being i can also put a sample of uh, what technology what technology is going to what application is going to use and what kind of antenna you are going to use so you have to decide so by this thing you can able to select what uh, arbitrage arbitrage you should solve in your software in the software your software as the option of FPM or PDT or MR. So, likewise, you can able to uh, design and simulate. Like, so, here, uh, creation of physical model. Uh, these are steps in the simulation process. Performing the EM simulation machine. Uh, plus, you will get some X parameter for the radiation curve. Some results will be created. But in a simulator, you can able to use. So, like, it's the same thing uh, if PDT, MOE method, via geometry. With 3D EMIMC, as with EMIMC, you should use 3D. Uh, I've heard you some uh, some spaceships or kind of Warcraft materials, Warcraft. Uh, uh, fighter jets you can use uh, uh, high mesh cells, FTTP. Uh, these things you can get a put. You can take a snapshot. And this is the overall view about the solver. Uh, for example, if you take like out of out of uh, you know, might say monolithic material to use, but you must have a PDT. If you can take an antenna, planar antenna, a normal passion, passion, uh, the more the momentum based may be used. FTM also can use, PDT also can use. Everything is used, but no momentum is better. And this is a condition also. So you can see here uh, the biometric analysis specific absorption rate. Okay, that 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 can be used only in PDT. Because uh, there is a you have a 
Certain solver yep, you use such a way that, that it solve it according to that. If you if you take uh, there there are different solvers, it doesn't suit you. Can you hear me? Hello? Sir? Hello, is it audible? Okay, sir, you can take okay. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm ending now. Okay. Uh, I think it's audible, right? Uh, or of, uh, let us continue with it. Um, Atina Design Engineer at Phoenix. I see, you can see the job specification there. See, I have, from this webinar, I have I have uh, taught you about like the what are these software you can, you can see the software name there, GST microwave. You can see the uh, microwave antennas, types of antennas you can see on the slide. You must know at least to design uh, some antennas based on what they have listed on the type of antenna. And you should know how to uh, test an antenna, measure an antenna. Okay? And uh, based on like me license, mechanical and protection engineering, is this is not related like you have to uh, make some uh, go to export your project to some other software and you, can, you must find out some other analysis. But that's not our main concern. You can see the more point highlighted here is the point highlighted in my webinar. See, that's a, a company called N people in Bangalore. They are present, they are asking for R of an antenna design engineer. That, uh, this is a, a recent uh, a job specifications I got in India. Uh, responsibilities you can see that poor design consistency based on customer. Provide HFSS technical support. You see the word HFSS. So, this is software which I have told uh, the types of software. Okay, what are the solvers you can use? So, the specific lecture delivery in our in our training teaching electromagnetic antenna design for IoT, space, defense, robotics, biomedical. So, you should know to design antennas which is related to IoT. Uh, is it audible, madam? Hello? Okay, so you should know. Uh, okay, you should know how to design a uh, uh, antenna uh, for IoT, space, defense, robotics, biomedical, and automotive applications. So uh, this uh, uh, you can see the uh, HFSS there uh, word and uh, application you can see there, right? So mostly I have focused on this kind of. Antenna applications where there is. So you can able to get a decent job here once you know, or once you have your hands on this uh, antenna design. And this is not a big technology, it is very interesting to learn also. Once you have a good concept of base knowledge in antenna design and antenna basics, 
can go ahead with any of the any or one of the solvers. You can able to design it and maybe you can get a job in any or one of these core job industries where your basic salary will be like quite higher. And uh, I'm sure that this is a, a good job in the field of antenna and technologies. Okay. And uh, thank you uh, for this wonderful session, which has been given by the DC. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir, for a detailed yeah. explanation about the antenna and its technology. And uh, totally, the presentation was very nice. Um, okay, now we can go ahead for questions. Uh, participants, any if you have any doubt, you can post the questions. You can post your questions in the As chat I, box. Uh, you can discuss that. You can post your questions in the chat box. As I have some uh, experience in industry as an uh, industrial antenna or design. Uh, I, I used to uh, train some of the students on this also. Uh, I also have designed for some companies. Uh, as I have done some consultancy project also. So, getting on to this antenna technology is very uh, interesting way. So, any queries or any doubts you can have, you can put it on chat session. No, okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I feel oh. happy that learning uh, uh, learning has given an opportunity. I hope the learners can get the, uh, the good stuff from my webinar. And uh, if you are interested, you can focus on antenna technology. Thank you, madam. Thank you for the opportunity. Ah, okay, sir. Okay. okay, we can close the session by thanking everyone. First and foremost, I thank the presenter, Professor T. Franklin Telso, for her. Uh, Valuable information. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to thank all the participants of today's webinar. I hope it is very useful for you. Thank you all. Finally, I would like to thank Mr. Yen Chaladurai, founder of Learning event organizer, and his team for making this webinar a useful one. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you. Finally, I have feedback link is given there. In the chat box, you can fill the feedback. Uh, you will review the e-certificate through me. Thank you. Thank you.